Hmm. All right, well, that's a problem. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, so quick explanation of what happened. I was, so the program's running, right? And I noticed my super great milk jug uh, splash guard on the stepper was starting to fall off. Uh, and that's because the coolant line was rubbing into it. Uh, so for now, quick and dirty, I've just got a piece of twine, you know, holding it up and I enlarged the hole at the back. Uh, this is obviously not a long-term solution, uh, so I need to, well, make better coolant guards and deal with the hose so it doesn't bump into things. But seeing as I'm in the middle of a program right now, I'm going to let it run, keep an eye on it, hope everything works out, and might have to hold the feed some more. We'll see what happens. All right, take two. Hey everybody. So while this is cutting in the background, I thought I'd offer a little bit of explanation of what's going on. Uh, but first, an apology for the lack of videos lately. It's been summer up here, and summer is a pretty rare and precious resource in my neck of the woods before the great white winter comes back. So we try to spend as much time outside as possible, and that usually means my shop time gets neglected. I don't have a lot of excuses for this video, though, because I've had this footage sitting on my hard drive for... I don't know, maybe six months now, and I've just been too lazy to edit it. But I'm on a work trip, sitting in a hotel right now, and thought it'd be a good time to do some editing. So apologies for the audio, it's a little funky because of this travel mic, uh, but I wanted to get this knocked out and uploaded. So what we're seeing right now is the top part of the brushless motor mount. So in the prior video we made kind of a top hat looking assembly, and this is the aluminum piece on the top of the top hat. Uh, it's what the brushless motor will attach to directly. The motor comes with a little bracket that you use to you know, mount the, the motor somewhere. And we could have used that. It would have been simple, just four holes and then mount the motor. But that didn't sound like a lot of fun. So instead, I took the top of the motor itself off, so the top of the can, and measured out all the, the dimensions of the, the features on that top motor piece. And we're going to mill that directly into this piece of aluminum. So it's essentially a, a copy of the top of the can. Um, is it necessary? No, not really. But it seemed like it'd be fun and I wanted to try out the tag to figure out feeds and speeds and see how the coolant worked and generally just play around with a new toy. So, you know, overkill is good for playing around. Uh, so yeah, sit back and relax. Uh, we'll hop into Fusion here and there to see kind of the different tool paths and what tools are used and Hopefully we don't break too many end mills. So here's the model. Uh, this is essentially the top view of the plate. If we flip it over, this is what's getting machined at the moment. Uh, you can see that this cutout here is where the brushless motor housing will actually go. Uh, there's slots for air ventilation, and then this part in the middle is contoured to fit essentially the, the top of the brushless motor. So the first operation is an adaptive clearing path. Uh, you can see here I've got it, it helixes into this slot here. Uh, this is where the wires come out of the, the motor, which is why it's kind of got this square section. Uh, so it helicals in and then adaptive clears out most of this slot. The tool being used here is a quarter inch three flute carbide end mill. I believe it's a lakeshore carbide end mill, but I, I don't quite recall. Uh, it's running at about 4,000 RPM, which is the upper practical limit of my tag. Uh, it can go a little higher, if I remember correctly. It can go up to about 6,000 RPM, but it loses uh, a lot of stability and uh, torque in the process. Um, just because of the way that the DC motor and pulley are set up, it doesn't feel, it just doesn't, <laughs> it wasn't designed for these higher RPMs. So I've been leaving it around 4,000 and it seems to do better as far as chatter and, and just general stability. Uh, this project I was aiming for between 1 and 2 thou uh, per tooth, which seems to work pretty well. Uh, and then that kind of drives the rest of the parameters. So we get a adorably small 16 inches per minute uh, feed rate. 
Uh, so, you know, we're not breaking any records here, but it's a tag. You know, I don't, wasn't expecting a whole lot more. After the bulk of the adaptive clearing, we do another adaptive pass, uh, which clears out the individual air ventilation slots. You can see it's pretty simple, basically helicals into the wide section and then just does a, a small clearing path to finish up the rest of the slot. Um, I messed up at this point, so the idea was for it to go all the way through uh, to let the coolant out, because I didn't want the coolant building up in here. Uh, but I got my offsets slightly incorrect. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it was in the program or if it was in uh, the calibration, like when I touched off. Uh, but essentially this doesn't go all the way through, you'll see in the video in a second, and so the coolant sticks around for the rest of the program. It was a little irritating, it would have been a lot easier to see had the coolant started flooding out the bottom of these slots. The next operation was just a quick adaptive clearing down the middle to get rid of this bore in the center. Um, and then we move over to some contour paths. So this 2D contour is essentially cleaning up the inside edges of all the slots. For the rest of the tool paths, I switched over to a 3 16th two flute carbide end mill. Uh, because it was a little smaller, I did bump the spindle speed up to about 5200-ish, give or take. Uh, it's all approximate based on what the, the tachometer was reading and, you know, fiddling with the knob a little bit. So it's not super precise, but a little bit faster than it was running before. Kept the feed at about one thou per tooth, which gave us an overall feed rate of 10, 10 and a half inches per minute. So we're crawling along at this point, but there's not a lot left to cut, so it wasn't too bad. Then we hop over to another 2D contour, and this is cleaning up the edges of these internal faces here. Uh, this probably wasn't the best idea, because then I had to do a horizontal to clean up the flats here, uh, and also all the flat sections here. Uh, if I remember correctly, while this was running, these flats were already cleaned up because of other operations, so this was just cutting air for the flats down here, uh, but I did need the sections up here cleaned off, so it, it worked out okay. Next we did a 2D adaptive for this internal bore, uh, followed by an actual boring operation to get that to the correct size. Uh, this is a non-critical dimension. Uh, this is essentially where the motor shaft goes through, so as long as it has enough clearance for the shaft to pass, it doesn't actually matter how big this hole is. Uh, so doing a boring operation here is probably overkill. We probably could have just spread the 2D adaptive out a little bit wider and it would have been fine, but like I said, playing with fusion. Uh, and then finally, we end it with uh, these three drilling operations to poke the holes, and this is where the motor will actually mount to. And then we are theoretically done. Although as you'll see in a minute, uh, because these slots didn't get actually cleared out, uh, they didn't go to the full depth when I programmed it, I had to go back and rerun this toolpath, but manually edit the, the G-code so it went a little deeper so I could punch through and, and actually finish the part. Of course, this wouldn't be one of my videos unless something went wrong. So the slot for the motor wires to poke out just wasn't quite wide enough. So I had to pop this over to the manual mill and enlarge it a little bit. But it was a relatively quick and easy operation. And then it was time to get everything assembled.